By the late Paleozoic, there was a large number of diverse amphibian groups, ranging from crocodile-like fish eaters to small legless aestopods. The vast majority of these groups would become extinct at the end of the Permian and not survive into the Mesozoic. In the early Carboniferous, the anapsid reptiles were the only reptiles alive on Earth. By the Permian, they had diversified into a number of groups, including the first herbivores, being the first vertebrates on land to use plants for food. Many uh, evolved very large sizes, certainly larger than most reptiles of the day, up to 20 feet or so. All of these anapsid reptiles, except for the ancestors of turtles, would become extinct at the end of the Paleozoic. The earliest cynodonts, those known from the late Permian, are also the most primitive. Uh, they lacked a secondary palate. This is a feature which would mark the later cynodonts. They contained extra teeth. In the most primitive form, divinia, the vomer bones are still paired and unfused. Uh, these traits would change in uh, the Permian form Procynosuchus, uh, which fused its vomer bones, had more complex cheek teeth, and reorganized jaw muscles such as the masseter. The first diapsid reptiles, with two temporal openings of the skull, evolved in the late Carboniferous and had evolved into a number of groups by the Permian period. Among the early diapsids were the first lizards, which evolved before the end Permian extinction. The very first archosaurs, or ruling reptiles, had evolved by the end of the Paleozoic. After the end Permian extinction, these early archosaurs would diversify to produce crocodiles, flying pterosaurs, dinosaurs, and a host of other archosaur groups.